How'd you guys meet each other? How do you guys know each other? How strip club we on now? Strip club? We're live. We know each other from the Mecca, right? From Gold's Gym. <laughs> Is that how I we met initially you? met? Yeah, I met you because somebody told me that you what, were with uh, Quest. We're talking about the posing room or what, what happened? Somebody told me you were with Quest and I was like, all right, got to go talk to that guy because I'm fat and I like these bars. You did. That's and I right. just came and talked to you. Yeah. We were just trying to get free <laughs> shit. That's all, we were, all you're trying to do? I was trying to get free shit, but then he, <laughs> he reversed it on me because he knew I knew a lot of people too. So then ah. I helped him give free shit to other people. Relationships. Relationships. Yeah, that's kind of what it is. How long you been in uh, fitness, Bruce? Fitness? I, I, you know, I, I competed in powerlifting when I was in high school. I was always an, an athlete, mm. mildly competitive in powerlifting. But when I went in the Marine Corps is when I really got serious about competing. Right. And then how, how did this relationship happen with uh, Quest Nutrition? <sighs> It's Seems a strange kind of unorthodox, right? Completely unorthodox, completely serendipitous. What I told you earlier is Shannon, who goes by Quest Creator, worked out in the gym where I worked out. Yeah. And I always saw her on the Stairmaster reading bodybuilding magazines, which is rare, right? For a, 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 a bay club. So we started chatting it up. And a few weeks after we met, I went to the LA Fitness Expo with my girlfriend at the time and stumbled across the Quest booth. And it was not a booth, it was a table with an <laughs> ugly black tablecloth. And I think they had two or three flavors. And we hit it off. And she gave me some products, and, and it kind of evolved from there. And you just liked the product? Liked the product, and actually I get, brought it to my, at the time I had the security business, I brought it to work and showed a couple of guys, and they were like, wow, these are not your normal crappy, crummy, you know. Yeah, at the time there was kind of a lot of shitty bars back then. The sawdust ones. Yeah, Steel bars. I, I remember like as soon as I tried them, I remember I actually would go on a search for them. So I heard about them mm -hmm. and I saw about, I saw them on social media. There was this girl, Courtney Prather, I think her name was. She was one of the original ambassadors for it. Right. And I saw on her Instagram and I kept writing her messages going like, how do I get these? She said, I think they have them at vitamin shop or something. So I went to a vitamin shop, tracked them down and I tried them and it was the best bar I had ever had. And then I had met you and I was excited about them already because I was, I had like sought them out. You know? That's funny, Courtney Pratter. She was one of our original uh, ambassadors. I, I mean, we're yeah, back to track in the day. her down now. Yep. You mentioned her. Yeah, let's uh, back it up just a yeah. little bit because the the time, you know, at the time there, there was a lot of shitty bars on the market. Mm -hmm. Like there was uh, Metrix bars. Like some of the companies were doing okay with flavor profile. Like mm -hmm. some of them weren't too terrible, but the uh, the macronutrients were, were Metrix like bars were great, but they had fifty grams of carbs. Yeah, yeah. It had like fifty grams of like sugar. And yeah. then remember like the steel bar, and there was the, <laughs> the detour bar was that was the yeah big hit. steel bar. And remember we basically you and I invented the pure protein bar. Yeah, yeah, basically. Because <laughs> I I found a pure protein bar uh, living in uh, Albany, New York, going to a Gold's Gym. And I saw that first one, the uh, the purple one with the uh, yellow yellow writing, the, the original pure protein oh, bar. Yeah, yeah. Before they got busted yeah, for yeah. not having the right, you know, stuff in <laughs> there or whatever. And they, they tasted they tasted really good. That was a huge breakthrough for protein bars. So I was all fired up and I called him. I was like, oh my God, they got these bars. He's like, they don't have them out here yet. Normally he saw everything first because he was in Venice. Right. And so we started talking about it and he's like, I'm gonna he's like, I'm gonna figure out how to get these. Uh, at the uh, yeah, so I found them and I brought them to George, who owns LA Urban Fitness oh, yeah, on Main George. Street in Santa Monica. That place and is great. George they was have like, everything well, there. Let, let me try them. Let me see if they're good. And as soon as he took a bite of one, he said, "This thing's amazing." And then he he started ordering them. So they were fluffy and we, light. Yeah, we George is a great we, guy. We're we still claim friends. that we invented them. Yeah, because no, we and, found and, them. And it, I'd be dating myself, but that used to be a Metrix Cafe back in the day. Yeah, you guys remember that? At all? Yeah, yeah. Metrix, Metrix Cafe Pizza. was next door. Yeah, I yeah, remember that. And too. LA Urban Fitness was just a tiny little yeah. thing. Now LA Urban Fitness has the whole, the whole thing and another store. Yeah. So they've kind of blown up. LA too. Urban Fitness was great. Every time we'd walk in there, the guy would just go insane. Every time we'd go in, because he'd be like, "Oh my God!" He's like, "That creatine's working so good for you." <laughs> like he's like, "What'd you get last time? Glutamine?" He's like, "Oh, the glutamine." He's like, "It's they working unbelievable." Yeah, he's yeah. like, "Look." Your, look at your shoulders, you know. And he's like, "We got to get you, you know." And then he's they pump you up, perfect big. salesman. <laughs> they pump you up big, so you buy more stuff. And that's when they had all the pictures on the wall of all the old timers yep. and champs. It was yeah, a great, yeah. I like you going in there. Yeah, the place was uh, it just jam packed with with pictures. They actually of, had a picture of uh, of Jake, your son, oh, yeah. underneath really? the glass for like the longest time. Yeah, they, they don't had have, all these pictures in there. Now so they, they have everything kid. on a computer, I think, in there. They yeah. still they cleaned it up. It's more modern. But I used to go in there and buy the box of the metrics powder with you know the envelopes mm -hmm. that you'd shake and yeah. Yeah, remember how thick that stuff yeah, would mix yeah. up? That, that, was, that was you needed like a cement mixer. In the day, that was that was really amazing, though. So, how did the Quest bars come to be? Whew. Any idea? Uh, yeah, very well. So, I mean, listen, Shannon was making them in her kitchen, 
And she was literally making them for, she'd have boot camps for the ladies on weekends and, and bringing them. And, and then her like uh, dad or something was a bodybuilder. Well, right? yeah. So her dad, Chet Yorton, was a very famous bodybuilder. He beat Arnold, I believe, in the 1967 Mr. Universe. Damn. So she's got some fitness heritage. Yeah. But she was making them in her kitchen. And then Ron took him to work, her husband. And uh, it was a tech company at the time. And the tech guys actually liked them. So, you know, they're the guys eating Doritos and Oreos. Yeah. And they actually enjoyed him and said, hey, you should bring more back. And uh, that's kind of where it started. He, uh, no intentions of getting that business. And he pitched his partners. I think he said he took about six months to convince them to do this because they're, they had no interest in a, who wants to start a We're at some interesting times now where everyone is gunning to be an entrepreneur. And a lot of people are like gunning to be in the fitness industry. And uh, they'll just pick certain things. They're not really... Uh, they're not founded the way that this bar was found, you know? And there's a lot of people that are trying to just sell like clothes or sell a protein powder or sell, but it's, it's so disconnected from the original basis of quest nutrition. What do you kind of think of some of that? A hundred percent. Yeah. Nowadays, I think if you have a couple bucks, you can go to a co-manufacturer and say, Hey, make me a protein and let me slap my name on it. And, right. and, and you market it. If you're a good marketer quest really originally, they really wanted to change the world. They, they had a healthy product with no added sugar and it tastes good. And that's what catapulted us, that people just enjoyed yeah. it. And they and their intentions were good. Like, we want to put a healthy product out there. They wouldn't have made it if, it, if they so, could not have produced so it. So many of the bars come and go. We've yeah. seen thousands of them come and go. What's the difference with Quest? What makes them different? Well, I got to tell you, the out? year we launched, I think they said there was a few hundred bar companies that launched, believe it or not, across the world. Oh, and wow. Most are probably not around. I think it was honestly the clean ingredients and it tastes good. They were the two things because mm. come on, we the time where bars launched, they either have that aftertaste, chalky taste. Right. You guys also did something that's pretty innovative. Uh, you weren't cheap. You gave out full bars, and that was a big thing. Like you go to um, an expo, and you get a little piece of this bar, a little piece of that bar, and you never really get to try it. But uh, Quest was never cheap. Even if you got a free bar, you go back and give another another free bar. Yeah, and one of the things I tell people now, because I talk to other people that own companies, and, hey, how was your success? Listen, I said, be generous with samples. It may cost you a couple of bucks, but even early on at Quest, if you wrote us, which, by the way, we got on the Facebook bandwagon right about the right time. It wasn't huge for businesses. If people wrote us, we would send two bars at our cost with postage, and that created such a rabbit fan. People were like, oh my right. God, you got to check this Quest bar out. They sent free. And the same thing with Expos. To this day, we give out whole bars. And a lot of people are going to hold on to the wrapper, too, to try yeah. to remember the name of the, of the company and everything. If you don't want to give it out a little chunk, how are you going to remember? And honestly, where you're going? who's going around? Who wants to do the toothpick? And, you know, it, right. but, it's all, we, but even to this day, we don't have to do it anymore. We still do it. A right. full sample. And what are some other things you guys done? Because it seems like for you personally, um, it seems like you're everywhere. Like I, like when I see your Instagram, you know, there might be a picture with you at the rock. Then you're with my brother. Then you're with like Michael Hearn. Then mm -hmm. you're like in this spot and that spot. And you're all, you're everywhere with congressmen, <laughs> police officers, bodybuilders. And then of course, all the fitness chicks we always see you with. A, a couple of those. <laughs> um, I, I, I pride myself on Mark. I call it pride and ownership. I t tell everyone, you know, you need to have pride in what you do. And I really do enjoy it. I mean, it's an easy sell. We're not selling something bad and it's easy. We're feeding people. Right. And I just enjoy connecting with people and building relationships. And it's, it's, it's natural. I mean, it, it comes easy to me Yeah, and it doesn't come easy to a lot of people. Some people, uh, I think it's uncomfortable to engage people at times. And probably when I was younger, I was a little shyer, but it's, it's to me, it's easy. Hey, I'm going to, I want to offer you a quest bar. I'm not trying yeah. to give you a, something radioactive. Yeah. You're probably going to like it. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Going back to what he was saying about everybody's trying to be an entrepreneur, I think it's pretty inspiring that Quest, didn't you guys break some records as far as how fast the company actually grew? Yeah, in 2014, we were named the second fastest growing company in the country by Inc. 500, and that's in all categories. And just for the record, the one that was named number one went out of business. Oh, my God. So, yeah, it's, yeah. it's been a phenomenal run for being seven and a half years old. It was yeah, I want to say like a number I heard was like it grew like 400,000% or something. Yeah, I think like it that. was 57,000%. Yeah, I, mean, I don't 7, know where they come up with that, that yeah, actual data. it was data. crazy. But it was, and, and it's interesting, looking back while I was on the ride, it just, you, you don't really, it's almost a blur how it happened. Next right. thing, you know, like one thing, and you know, GNC is a, a great partner for us, but they came to us. People, because right. the hype great, became so great on Facebook, and the word of mouth that retailers were reaching out to us saying, hey, we got we to gotta carry your product. We, we heard great things about it. Well, that's a big thing is like a lot of people are like overreaching a lot of times. They're, they're reaching out to people and reaching out for things and chasing after things that they haven't quite earned yet. Correct. Exactly. They're kind of better off having it just fall into your lap almost. And listen, it's a lot of, yeah, it, it, exactly. And it's a lot of work. I mean, if you're going to start a company, you got to put the time in. 
you know, we started out doing the bodybuilding shows, John Lindsay shows in Culver City. We're still there, but we we did them every every. Yeah, other you guys week. are at a lot of shows. That's yeah. a big deal. Like mm-hmm. a lot of time, a lot of times, companies won't have uh, time for that, or they won't make the time for it. Rather, they don't make the time. They outgrow the space. I call it. They hey, we started here, but then there, I feel it's important to stay loyal to where you started. We right. started in bodybuilding in the fitness community. We'll always be there. Now we're, of course, in Walmart and Target and right. the Midwest, but those, that's where we started. You guys have any uh, growing pains and any problems come up? Like, you know, you're using all these different new ingredients that nobody's ever used. Any you problems start with to any use them in the like millions, that? it's got to be problematic. Yeah, right? there, I think there's, yeah, there's problems every day. I mean, you know, you, you, you overcome obstacles every day in business. We, you know, when we, when we started using allulose in some of the bars, people didn't know what that was. It's been around forever, but we were one of the first companies to use it. What the, is allulose? Explain that a little bit. Well, the simplest terms, it, it, it's derived from fruits, dates, and, and different things, but it, your body doesn't digest it. It's about a fraction of what, so it's, 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 you have to label it because the FDA is sugar, but your body doesn't digest it. You basically urinate it mm-hmm. out. But it's when you you have to explain that to people. They still look at it right. as labeled as sugar. But we yeah, are, the the uh, bar label I remember from this is a little confusing, but it has information with it. Yeah, to help you with some of the math. And, and listen, and one thing Ron has always been innovative in that you know coming up with the latest things, and and we took a risk with allulose, but it's done very well. Oh, Ron is really interesting. He like it, not to say he doesn't care is like the wrong wording, but like it seems like he his focus is on making a great product. Yeah, I, when I tell you that the cookies, we tasted cookies three years ago and we just launched them. Yeah. We kept scrapping them and I'd be like, they're amazing. No, they're not. We'd throw them away. It took three years to launch those. We had been dabbling in products that right. will eventually come out, but it, he's he's a perfectionist when it comes out, which is, I think, something to be really yeah, proud of. Yeah, he was of. telling me he's still not happy with stuff. He's yeah, like, yeah. yeah, he's like... <laughs> There's things that are out that he's, he's like, kinda, we got to improve it. Yeah, he's kind of grumpy about yeah. it. Yeah, what's that point like when you get to the point where you're like, okay, now it's perfect? Um, is it ever perfect? Because you're always going to want it. It'll be a new and improved, right? The yeah. bars change, we like evolve, we have new bars coming out. Yeah, you're always going to want to up the ante a little bit, right? Yeah. Um. With uh, your background, has that helped a lot? Because you're you're a Marine, and then you were LAPD. LAPD. I'd imagine you uh, develop thick skin, and and uh, you know you asking somebody to try some Quest bars and stuff is probably a little bit easier at having that background and stuff like that, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's interesting when I tell people I was a Marine and a cop, they think of more of a tough, hard ass, and I I, I could be, I guess, but I, I'm more of a relationship guy and, and mm-hmm. building. And the irony is, a lot of the people I knew when I was a cop or when I had the bodyguard business, a lot of celebrities are now Quest fans. Like I've reached out to people oh, I used to do cool. protection with, say, hey, by the way, and now I'm in this other right. industry. Like, you know, Jessica Simpson, different artists that right. that are now fans of Quest. Oh, that's a lot that's safer. Yeah. yeah, right, a lot <laughs> safer. But it, it's 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 it, it's unique. Yeah, you know, I've just built relationships that I think lasted for decades. How have you built some of these relationships? Have a lot, of, has a lot of it happened at Gold's Gym? That's one place. Running Gold's- some of these people and at just training? Gold's Gym in general, I mean, I think the, the, the places I go, I'm, I used to be involved a lot with the security with the music awards and right. entertainment awards. And like a lot of people don't know, but we, we, we're in the gift bags and a lot of the Academy Awards, the Emmys, the Oscars, That's and a lot cool. of the green rooms. Just, and by the way, just by relationships, because I have a lot of people ask me, how'd you get in there? Listen, you got to develop relationships. There's probably brands that do pay for that, but we're fortunate that people want right. our product. You just mentioned, uh, you said a lot of people don't know. Um, I think a lot of companies have a hard time wrapping their brain around that. You know, like uh, you've always told me like, hey, I'm going to give you some Quest Bars and you don't need to say anything about it. I think most companies don't, under- don't understand that. What's the philosophy yeah, behind that? Yeah, I think that? a lot of marketing people, and I say now or in general, hey, I'm going to send you something. I expect you to talk about it. There's no expectation. I, we always use the philosophy, the fight club. We, we don't talk about it. Right. I'd send you, and we did that even from the beginning. And it worked well. We had, we, I remember a few years ago, we met Ronda Rousey at an at a expo and we became friendly, sent her product and she did a tweet. Yeah. The whole time her manager was bothering us to do a deal and he called me and says, hey, Ronda just did a tweet about you, about Quest. I said, oh, that's wonderful. But she did it organically. Right. But he was upset because there was no monet, monet, monet <laughs> yeah. cut. So I talked to her and she goes, I, I did it because I like you guys. But we've been so fortunate at Arena where people like Arnold or... I- I've just organically talked about You're it. You're just but kind I'll over be, and over but, again. But, and I think it's because we never ask anything in return. Yeah, I you think say, that's you, why. You, you never, show up at a nice gift box at your house, maybe they talk about it, maybe it they don't. It makes you want to post about yeah, it. Yeah, you feel you good about it, about as it. opposed to... Right. Anyway. Well, you've been sending stuff to my house forever. And, and you my, still don't talk about us. No, no, I never, I never that's will. That's because of me. I'll never I'm, say... I'm kidding. With the Quest bars, my wife has never been a huge fan of the Quest bars. Okay. 
But with the legendary foods, you guys started sending some of that stuff. And she's like, oh my God, she's like, she likes a lot of the uh, nut butters and some of the different things you guys have. And so eventually I think your, We're gonna ki- <laughs> your kindness will always pay off, you know, in the long run. And you know one thing I mean? our goal is, and, and what Ron's vision is, and our vision is go picture going to a Super Bowl party and you have the, the, the table where there's pizzas right. and nachos and cookies. There will eventually be a quest table. So yeah, we have cookies now. We're going to have yeah. other things. That's and- my theory too. I'm going to get you somewhere, whether it's yeah, the shoes it's not- or the knee sleeves or the elbow exactly. sleeves. Or the yeah. So if it's not cookies or peanut butter or dog yeah. food, we're going to cover your family in every way we can. <laughs> Plus water. <laughs> How Everything. did the dog food come to be? So as you know, with, with uh, you know, our passion about uh, looking at answers for cancer, we started the foundation, Epigenics Foundation, and we have the ranch in Texas, which we've mm. taken quite a few dogs in and, and reversed tumorous cancers with the ketogenic diet, which you guys are very familiar with. Right. And, uh, you know, Ron had a vision and we started the, uh, the uh, Valiant Dog Food, which is, you know, freeze dried keto type foods and uh, just another, another, another right. a mission. Well, a lot to- of people don't know their dogs are eating crap. If they're not yeah. eating like a raw food diet and and it's interesting, most people dogs, send, I believe, are they're they're carnivores, right? They're yeah, not yeah. supposed to be eating carbs. And you spend as much carbs. on your dogs as you do on your kids, but yeah, they, they're not. They weren't raised to eat grains and, and cereals, so right. Most people, if you're going to do it right, should be feeding them raw foods. And so, so what's, so what's in these raw freeze dried medallions? Yeah, all meats and, and vegetables. That's it. Yeah, keep Perfect. it keeping it keeping it easy. Have you tried one? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> we'll try one right now. Hey, Mark, we'll like, try no. one right now. You now. mentioned uh, a little earlier. You said um, that you've uh, kind of taken ownership in the company, and I think that's important for employees to feel uh, to feel that way. But this week, when you walked around with the actual owner, Ron Penna, you said that it, it kind of got it. It kind of felt a little awkward a couple yeah. times because he's the actual owner, and people are like, "Fuck, I thought you owned it the I've whole time." O- I've experienced that since day one. <laughs> I've been to dinner with these guys, and people will approach me or at expos and say, "Hey, Bruce, how you doing? I love your product." By the way, who are these guys? Oh, I, and I when, tell people, them when people introduce you as the owner of Quest Nutrition, you probably don't correct them, right? No, I don't. And, and, and it's interesting. Ron never has. I mean, because it's yeah. always been a very, I've never claimed it, but people call <laughs> right. me all the time. Hey, you want to come on the show? I'm looking for the owner. And it's, it's, at times it's awkward, but it just come to be that, I guess, because of what I've done for the company, it's, it's just what they believe. Right. So. And, and everything you've done for the company has been all kind of relationship based. Is there any, uh, is there any like paperwork behind the scenes? Is there a lot of other stuff that you're doing for the company as well? Or is it mainly just, uh, you know, having these relationships with uh, celebrities and these uh, kind of event relationships? Yeah, what's paperwork? Creating? I don't know. How, yeah. How do, you, how do you keep track of stuff? Because I used to tell you like, hey, Bruce, can you send me a box of bars or whatever? He never wrote anything down. But you don't seem like and a it, desk guy. Are you it, not a desk showed, guy at all. It always and just showed up. So for sure, one of my weaknesses, don't ask me to do an Excel spreadsheet, uh, but I still carry a day planner. Um, <laughs> no, it's tough because I'll give you an example. I came back from the Arnold Expo and I have about 30 business cards mm-hmm. and probably most of them I, I, I'm going to send product to, but it's a follow-up thing. Yeah. Ron, I need a new assistant. Yeah. I was going to say, do you have someone to do an Excel spreadsheet? i people over the years, and now right now I don't, but it's interesting. I have so much follow-up to do. And like yeah. you said, yeah. I'll run into John Cena at the gym. Oh, God, to send him something. And it's, it's and every- you just got to remember to do it. every day. I usually have to make a note, and then sometimes someone will remind me, hey, our event's this weekend. Oh, shit, I better FedEx that shit overnight. Yeah. But Quest, it's constantly. Quest has been, you know, unconventional from the beginning. Um, how did the company, you, you mentioned how they started with um, Ron's wife uh, make it, making the bars in her kitchen and everything. Kind of what happened from that point on? I mean, you know, the uh, manufacturing and stuff like that, did they go to like a co-packer and somebody was making them or did they make them themselves the whole time? <laughs> well, I tell you, they were making them. So obviously in Shannon in the kitchen, they evolved to getting commissary space at night, you know, renting space and making them by hand. And they were probably pretty expensive. Yeah. Three tech guys making them by hand. They had no intentions of getting in manufacturing. It was once they took, let's just call it the dough, the, me- the, the right. material, they took it to manufacturers and no one could produce it. No Everyone one knew said, what the hell it was really. Hey, right? put some agave, liquid sugar, make it more pliable doughy in the work so we wouldn't change our philosophy mm. and uh, the machinery. So they ended up buying a used piece of equipment. And honestly, Mike Osborne, who was one of our founders and has acted as the COO and CFO and mm-hmm. he's just a great guy, good old farm boy, he modified the equipment to work. And still by no means was that a success. Right. Modified it to work and there still was some challenges. Right. But it got to the point where we ba- ended up manufacturing to the point where I think we were manufacturing a million five bars a day. Wow. And it's interesting. We just got out of the manufacturing business. So now that after all these years, other people now have figured out how to make it. Right. So now we farm it out to uh, Comans. That saves us a fortune. 
That's an insane amount. That's an insane uh, volume. But like it, he's but saying it, it must have been some growing pains. Oh, yeah. Home. Growing pains. Go, yeah. How do, we knew nothing about manufacturing. We right. had to hire people. But the point is, we were, gonna, we were just going to be a, mar- a sales and marketing company. No, in, no intentions of becoming a shipping and manufacturing. Have you helped with some other relationships? You mentioned GNC. Have you kind of helped with some of that? Or is yeah. that more for... No, no. I, I think everything. I mean, I, I'm involved with, you know, GNC, Vitamin Shop. They have celebrity golf tournaments. Europa, mm-hmm. which is a big partner of ours. They have the expos. Right. They have events. I, yeah. You guys made some keto products for a little while. We were just talking about some of that stuff. Um, can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, yeah, like, for sure. We what, had a keto line. Um, right now, it, it, we've temporarily put it on hold. It's done, it's done very well. The demand is crazy. And as you guys know, I still brought you some snacks. Um, we're re-looking, we're reevaluating that now. Probably going to a kill manufacturer and do the snacks. Right. Probably not the meals right now, but the snacks for sure. We're, there's, there's been a yeah, great, I think great, the snacks are a great, mm-hmm. a great idea. And it's a tool that we definitely need the peanut for the ketogenic dieters yeah. for sure. You know? Yeah. You need it to be easy. Yeah. You know, that's one thing with the diet. People always have a lot of questions about the sugar alcohols and what carbohydrates do I count? And you know, are these cookies and things like that? Okay. And what I always tell people is whatever will keep you on the diet. Yeah, exactly. You know, whatever yeah. will keep your momentum, whatever will keep you because we know consistency is the key. Exactly. Have you been able to be consistent as you would like with your own fitness and your own training and stuff like that? Um, no, no, mm-hmm. to be honest. I mean, I've had peaks and valleys. I mean, I'll be honest. You started very young and you've been, you've been lifting your and whole I life, can, right? And I did fairly well in powerlifting, not to your level, but I had some pretty decent yeah. numbers. Uh, I'd say three years ago, it's interesting. I went hardcore keto and intermittent fasting at the same time. You got real lean for a while. Wait, I was down. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm a slob. I feel like I was down 35 pounds from where I am now. Mm-hmm. So I... You guys are going to make me feel like shit. So I got to well, we, we all have to no, get back on it. Yeah, 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 it's, a, it's a tool. You yeah, just it's, get it's back tool. on it. Because it's yeah. e- once you're in the rhythm, it's easy. Right. Yeah, we all have our ups and downs. And, yeah. and you're, what I've learned over the years is that your, uh, your willpower will waver, you know, kind of with your mood and just with your lifestyle and just with where everything's going. But it's your habits that will always bring you back. So if you have a habit to go in the gym and to train, and then eventually you'll you'll head back in that direction. Yeah, I never not. Tra- I always train. I always like yeah. to, even if I'm traveling and you know I still. Yeah, you're always it. in the gym. It came yeah, to super training, and he had the most amazing uh, boat neck shirt that I've seen in a long time. Yeah, Bruce has some good. The ADF. Yeah, he has some good old school like <laughs> Bill Belichick style. <laughs> That's funny. I get comments on that. Yeah. People yeah. ask me to make them for him. Cut off the neck. Yeah, boat yeah, neck. it was a cu- custom made. I didn't realize I'm throwing myself back to the '80s, but I guess yeah, you got it, like Barbarian <laughs> Brothers style. Yeah, yeah. You got to wear the boat neck with like the tank top underneath, so this, you know. What kind of numbers were you hitting uh, back in the powerlifting days? <laughs> uh, nothing to be four forty uh, bench. That's, that's pretty damn good. Huge bench. Yeah, a little over six on a deadlift and squat. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, it's not you know. No, those are big. Those I'm not are big going. Any, I'm not going anywhere big. But what do you think the best athlete that you've been around? Because you've actually worked out with a lot of these guys. So <laughs> yeah, like, I've been uh, very fortunate. Yeah, who who do you think is uh, you know one of the more impressive people that you just worked out with? I, you and I haven't actually worked out together. We haven't. You've stayed about 50 yards uh, apart. Yeah, you're pretty close. Um, I, you know, I recently worked, I was actually an honor. I worked out with Branch Warren and uh, the, as the CFO he, of uh, Falcor. He's a beast. I heard Branch Warren like really tears it up in the gym. I heard he gets after it. Yeah, there's no lightweight in his yeah. world. I heard it's everything's 15 reps and he tries to go as heavy as yeah, possible. Yeah, and- maybe a little too heavy. <laughs> but I had the pleasure of working out with him when I was in Vegas for an event. And yeah, that was an honor. You get a chance to work out with Mike O'Hearn? Uh, no, Mike and I haven't worked out. We're actually working out together uh, next week. Oh, cool. We Vesric- I worked out with a Jay Cutler a few times. Yeah. How was that? It, he did. It, it was just a regular workout. I yeah, thought he was pretty, be, he's pretty mellow guy. He, he just wasn't going to kill you, right? Yeah. Right. He wasn't going to kill you. I had to tell you, I meet he's a lot of people. He's pretty calm in general. Yeah. Jay he's Cutler. just a great human being. Yeah. I think he's one of the best ambassadors. He was at the uh, event this weekend, right? Was yeah, he came by. Yeah, the event. I, yeah, the I deadlift contest that we ran. Yeah, we've become pretty good friends. And I'll be honest, I he was one of the first guy I looked at and admired. I was at, we were at an expo at the hotel gym working out mm. and he was on the treadmill. A kid came up and tapped him on the shoulder. Why is in, you know, three miles an hour asking for a picture. He got off, took a picture. So later on I saw him and he goes, it's just, you know, I'm an ambassador of the sport. He goes, did he have the right etiquette to do that? But I'm going to always stop for my fans. And, and I've watched, you see him at an expo. Yeah. He'll wait till the lights are out. He'll be the last one to leave. Oh, yeah. a lot of times people are excited. Yeah. You know, they're not thinking, they're not, they're not really yeah, thinking. Yeah, oh my God, there's Mr. Olympia. Like, oh, this cardio session is super important for him to get to the next. Yeah. You know, you're not thinking of any of those things. You're just, you're just fired up. But I, multiple yeah, time and, champion. But, but I've always admired him on how he <clears throat> treats people and how respectful he is. And he stops to talk to everybody. Yeah. And yeah. I got a chance to, uh, to listen to him speak before and it was really cool. And I thought, uh, man, what a beast the guy is because he said that he really didn't like a lot of it, but he just made himself do it. 
Yeah. And I think that's an important thing when it comes to, when it comes to anything in life is to kind of make yourself do the things that you don't want to do when exactly. you don't normally want to do them. Yeah. yeah. Just kind of keep, keep, uh, keep pushing forward. What's next for you guys? What are you guys working on now? Um, some top secret stuff. Cause I'm tired. Yeah, some top, <laughs> all there, top secret. Yeah. There, but there's a couple of cool things coming out. Yeah. that you're going to blow you away. Foods. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. And then you guys have gotten involved in CrossFit and everything too, right? You've gotten involved in some of these new spaces also. Yeah. Yeah. I got us involved with CrossFit about five years ago, like I said. Um, so we're dabbling that again. We took a little break. Um, but the demand is there. So we're back in that. We're in some tough mutter events this year. You guys have tried some things, um, like the, like the keto meals. You've tried the, uh, the, that head thing, and I think you're bringing that head thing the, back, the, right? Yeah, the training device, the right. all-strike. Right, because Ron is into martial, martial arts, arts, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, I admire that. I think that's cool. He also had, like, pasta, right? And yeah. They had that, a bunch of yeah. different things. That, I like, forgot about the pasta. Shiitake noodles. They either yeah. worked or didn't work, right? Yeah, they weren't a big seller. It's right. like a fiber source. But they were good, I think, if people crave pizza, you know, pasta. Right. Yeah. It was, it was but nice. I'm just saying, what Mark, to his point, is like, you guys tried a lot of things. Oh, yeah, we're not afraid to try things. You know? And the, the All Strike, the head is coming back. And you even had an apparel company for a while. Yeah. Like that, an apparel company the didn't really work. chips, they're still around. They're still right? around. The protein chips, chips. you're going to see some newer versions of that are going to be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I remember talking to Quest Nutrition years ago. I can't remember who I was talking to from the company, but uh, they kind of mentioned that that was the goal was to create more food. Mm -hmm. It's not a supplement company. Uh, how did, how is that different than uh, some of the other supplement companies out there? The mindset that you guys have. Well, yeah, we've always prided. If you look at our packaging, it's it's attractive. There's nothing. We always had the saying: it, it's not a veins and you know chains. There's not no, a lot of muscle. There's no, there's on no there. muscle head on it. And we did that by design. I mean, obviously, it's we're very popular in the bodybuilding community, but we can also attract you know everybody. Yeah, and, that, I find that that that's really interesting because you guys don't even have sponsored athletes, and I know that out of every single company, you probably get the most requests. You've probably had thousands of people request. Every day to be sponsored by quest, but you guys don't sponsor anybody. And you've, st you've held steadfast on that for a really long time. Yeah. We have quest squad members or there's probably 400 people around the country that represent us, but you know, right. in a different way, in a different way, they send product, they do missions, but yeah, we, we pride ourselves on being a food company. So it's attractive for everyone. Where do you guys spend your money when it comes to advertising? It seems like you guys have a set kind of schedule. Well, there's on, definitely on, a big piece of the marketing budget, you know, on ad space, digital right. campaigns, uh, we do a lot of, you know, a lot of YouTube stuff, huh? a lot of YouTube, a lot of coupons. I always get the little uh, recipes pop up on every, almost every video is Quest Nutrition. Right. But, and we're also in grocery now. So you do coupon right. things with different grocery chains, GNC, vitamin But the shop. money's not necessarily spent on just giving it to like particular athletes. It's more so in marketing, like you're Correct. talking about some digital marketing and then also putting money behind maybe like a sport or a cause rather than like just a single person. Yeah, correct. Yeah, because we, ne we never... I think we it's all, smart. Those people, the people, those people shift around a lot. And we know? agreed early on. We didn't want a face of the company per se. I mean, right. we wanted to... Having them in the airport is huge. Oh, the they airport's at, done well. They have them at LAX now. Yeah. yeah. I bought four bars That's the other day just in case, you know, like I, you don't know what's going to happen. No, it's kind of funny. We, we were just talking about this the other day with Ron. People send me pictures from the airport. Hey, I just bought one yeah. of your bars. Yeah. But early on, when we were so small, there was a group of about six of us at Quest. We would send, oh my God, I just saw this in a mobile station. It was so exciting. Now we feel that with our, our, or something, our right? fans write us, hey, I'm yeah. at an airport in, in Germany. And yeah, I was your surprised bar. to see them in the airport, but I was excited because I bought yeah. a couple of them. Yeah, there's a lot of bars on the market. You know, I was told a, they're expensive at the airport. Nah, they were, I think, <laughs> actually, it was like less than I thought. Oh, really? They were like, they're probably like three four bucks or something. Or something like that. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. But who cares? It's like, you know, that you pay for the it's convenience. captive audience. <laughs> yeah. You pay for the convenience. Yeah, they, yeah, they, they have to, they yeah. have to, uh, they have to purchase it. What's your favorite part of working for the company? Um, the freedom to build uh, genuine relationships. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's authentic. No one's holding me back. I can, you know, we're in the WWE and irony of, you know, we all grew up watching it. It was fun. But now we really have righteous fans. Like they invite. Yeah, didn't you guys go to a uh, match yeah, recently? We went to a couple of them, me and Bruce. Yeah. But it's really weird. Of all places, you think they, they write me, hey, Mr. McMahon wants him in his you know, office. Yeah. And we stuff. go to the WWE, we're backstage, and like Rick oh, Flair's daughter comes yeah. up and like, hey, Bruce. So you it's, like it's kind of cool. The last thing you place. want is a chicken, you know, another chicken breast or another piece of yeah. steak. You know, sometimes yeah. you want something different. And even before the Super Bowl, I was fortunate enough, I sent some product to both teams. Not all the players, obviously, they didn't have all their information, and it was cool because right before they were getting on their buses, they were they were tweeting about, "Hey, thanks for the bars." Right. So we've been fortunate to touch a lot of different verticals in sports. So That's really cool. And with the, one thing I'll touch on in the NFL, which is I think it's great for our brand. You know, Gatorade's the official NFL brand. 
Right. But we have 24 teams that buy from us. You're like the unofficial. Un- we're the right. unofficial. And I was fortunate enough, I grew up a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. I grew up in Jersey, and I've go. been back to their headquarters twice, and they have a whole area, like a Quest mm-hmm. kiosk for their players. Terry Bradshaw was my hero growing up. By the way, the he loves cinnamon bun Quest Party. <laughs> so I was <laughs> on the favorite. show. I went on the show at, where they film at Fox, and he tracked me down. I, I, he texts me because, hey, I'm out of cinnamon That's, bun. I got to meet Terry Bradshaw. We got to make that happen. He's he's. Like our guy, he's, he's a legend. He's my man. Oh, he's amazing. He's a great speaker too. We need to get him on the podcast. Yeah, Terry he's, Bradshaw. Yeah, he's, but that uh, whole lineup, uh, uh, Michael Strahan's a big fan. Oh, yeah. That whole crew. Yeah, great. Yeah, Michael Strahan's. There's another Hall of Fame. Another savage. Yeah. Those guys are. Those guys are. Those guys are uh, beasts for sure. Um, how's your? Uh, you, you're gonna you're gonna hit the gym list tomorrow at four o'clock. You you want to jump that, in on that schedule? Do I need invite with, uh, with O'Hearn? We're gonna be with O'Hearn. Are so. you gonna do it at four too? Yeah, why not? All right. Yeah, well, I think we all should. We should, yeah, we should make it. You a, can't? I can't not be there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Are you bringing your crew? Uh, your boy Daniel from Quest will be there. Okay. Of I'll be there then. Be we'll, there. We'll, turn, <laughs> we'll turn it into an event. I'm going to go to bed at six tonight. <laughs> I know. As soon as we're done with this, right, I'm going. me and yeah, Bruce no, need to go to sleep I know. after this, and then we'll be up at four. So you you were in the LAPD for 12 years, you yeah, said, right? Yeah, 12 years when I got out of the Marine Corps. And you were there during the riots and stuff like that, yeah, too? Yeah, yeah, the riots, the OJ trial. The oh, huge geez. mustache back then, too, this guy. Yeah. Did you? Tom Selleck yeah, mustache. Yeah, a little porn cop mustache. You got to get those pictures to pop up on these videos. <laughs> if yeah. you get some, my, uh, I'll send you some pictures. Yeah. But he's got pictures of him um, bodyguarding like Clint Eastwood. And some pretty cool people, right? You've yeah, got to, I, I was. Got to I mean, I think things happen cool for a reason. I, I did some security in the Marine Corps for the commandant, the general. But when I got out, I, I worked off duty to make extra money. And the guy that mentored me, uh, he was retiring, so I start. I just started my own business, and it, it, once again, relationships, and end up getting. It was a pretty big company. I, I was doing all the Sony Music's work and hmm. just meeting people. So I was a cop, and then working at night, and it evolved. To a What's big, the coolest thing you got to see in the in the fitness world? You get to go to every event, every Arnold. You know, get to see a lot of powerlifting, a lot of strongman, a lot of, you know, what's, what's something that you remember? Anything special? Uh, Any competition or anything? I really, I mean, I've always been that whole, you know, I grew up in the Bill Kazmaier era where he was the guy. Oh, and, man, he was I got to see him, Brian Shaw, Mark Henry, yeah. Thor. I got pictures of all of them. I mean, it's cool. I've always admired the strongman thing more than anything. Fitness yeah. is cool. But to be able to lift a thousand pounds. Oh, those strongman guys are unbelievable. This year was insane. And they're the kindest the ever. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, this year was nice. a battle. With oh, Half Thor and Brian. It was awesome. It so was I, uh, five thousand pound deadlifts, I think. Yeah. So if I picked any sport, I just admire a strong guy. I mean, it's like a feat, a feat yeah. of strength, and oh, it's unbelievable how yeah. they. I mean, it takes a certain just genetics to even be. Oh, to even be in that world, there can't be. There's actually like I think one only one guy. He's like considered small, and he's like three hundred and ten pounds or something, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's not too many guys that are just three over three hundred. You know, like if you're over just barely over three hundred, you're not cutting it in that sport. Right. Yeah. Uh, has anything ever happened, you know, when you were doing security, like anything when you're uh, bodyguarding some of these people or anything? You know, I used to do a lot of the case behind the scenes with, with their threats and stalking cases. Right. That was a big part of it. No, no, no one ever like I tried to attack some aggressive fans. When I used to take care of Mariah Carey, mm. we traveled a lot and there was always some some weirdos that want to approach. Did her. you uh, learn some like hand to hand combat in, in addition? Oh, to, yeah. When I was in Marine know, Corps, I used, to, I used to I wrestled all through high school and then I took martial arts all through high school and the right. Marine Corps. And yeah. Not not too many. Most it's it's more being aware and, and and having a plan of action. What do you think nowadays with uh, just some of the crazy shit that's going on, like these school shootings and stuff like that? You know, I've heard some people say they think having an officer at each school or something like that might might help. Or yeah, man, that's such a, a controversial thing, man. I remember it's, like when we were kids, you just played on a playground and had a good time, yeah. and now you never worry had about, to think about it. You now know? you yeah, literally, it was never a thought. Yeah, now, my son's school got a threat the other day. Now you, you know, have to think crazy. about kids being kidnapped or shot, and it's 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 yeah. a scary world. It's wild because and unfortunately, I mean, preventive measures are obviously important, but I don't I don't have the answers. I, I yeah, believe. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I'm a security person. I'm very conscious about it. But even if you had an armed guy at every school. That doesn't we were, mean someone can't We were still... interviewing uh, Dominic D'Agostino the other day, University of, yeah. of South oh, Florida. Yeah. I didn't even think and there was that. an active shooter. Well, like not an active shooter, but there was a Emergency. warning. There's an armed person on campus yeah, walking around. up on all the computer screens. Popped up on arms. everybody's computer screen. So Dom got alerts on his phone. So what you guys, locked down? Yeah, we were, were on lockdown. Yep. We were on lockdown for yeah. about, they said basically don't go anywhere for about an hour. It's it's and I don't know scary, I, you know it's very you scary and it's interesting how the world's on. changed like now and it's got it's it's even worse it's almost socially acceptable to hear oh ten people got shot like yeah. it's like twenty years ago that'd be like a tragedy right it's uh, it is well, a tragedy but now it's almost like yeah. oh what happened this week in the world yeah well I think there's something like forty of them or something yeah this year alone something That's, just you know 
something just wild like that. Um, if Quest Nutrition, you know, popped around uh, before uh, the internet, yeah, you know, things probably would have played out quite differently. But the product is good, you know, and so I think when you have a good product. I get I get asked a lot of times about uh, business questions and stuff, but when you make something that that people enjoy, when you make something that people want, it tends to kind of grow on its own, right? Right. Yeah, I I, I believe that too. It grows organic. I mean, listen, there's a lot of work. I, there's there's a lot of work. There's luck. There's timing. I think there's everything right. with a business. But you're right. Without the internet, I mean, we were fortunate with the internet. But I think we may not be at this level without that. But but because the product so speaks for itself. I got a hold of Quest Nutrition's uh, Instagram for, for the day. Oh. And uh, I was popping around on there for a little bit. I don't know. And it's just, it's just loaded with tons of girls. It's the opposite of my, it's a, yeah. you know, I have 98% probably, probably males, you know, looking at my stuff. And this was, uh, this was all chicks. Why do you think girls have gravitated towards the product so, so well? I think, is it because of me or the product? It's probably, I don't know, know. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Probably. Um, I don't know. Well, you know what they say to statistically, women... I think it's a little skewed because men, women shop for their men too. Right. Most. So I, I think the numbers are high be, because of that, but I, I don't know. I think it's almost equal con consumption. Yeah. The women probably like the, uh, like the treats maybe a little bit more. Or something. And yeah, yeah, they like the food porn. Everyone, I mean, everyone's cooking with it, microwaving, right. making cool stuff. So. That's been a big thing for you guys. And then even at the quest, when you took us through that quest headquarters, you guys had a kitchen in there and everything like that. Oh yeah. There's a lot of creative stuff going on. We had the show going on. So yeah, there's people. You guys were big. You're the first company to really come out with a protein that was meant to cook. Right. We had the plain flavor. Matter of fact, so all at, sorts of flavors, but you could cook with them too. Of all people, I'm at the Arnold and I'm talking to Bill Kazmaier and he says, Oh, I use your bake, your plain flavor <laughs> to make waffles. So of course <laughs> I'm sending is. him a shit ton. That's great. Yeah. There he is baking with it. With but it, isn't right? that weird? Like you, like, you see Bill Kazmaier with an apron, with an apron like just to cook yeah. and he's making up yeah. some pancakes. So yeah, I think I, we were, we were early on adopters of our, we, our protein where people were baking with it, right. cooking, cutting up our bars, baking, uh, making cookies. So it was all kinds of cool stuff. I think it was a few years ago when the company was really cranking really well, you guys, you guys had to switch some, uh, an ingredient. We, we are our fiber source. And that, I mean, that's a big deal to, to go ahead and do that. And huge deal. I but, think. Yeah, good. I was gonna say I think part of the reason was uh, the fiber source wasn't as good as you guys thought, and, and, and so you had to switch and to the something better. And the accurate carb count, we we discovered right. that through a study, so we we were proactive in changing it before it to get ahead of but the. But most curve. companies wouldn't do something like that. Yeah, and it was it was not only costly; it cost us some customers because they think you know when when your, your average consumer sees you're changing something, they think because you're just trying to save money. They think you're being yeah. cheap. cheap. Yeah. It wasn't the fact; it actually cost more money. But we took a little. Took a little hit yeah, on that. Yeah, it's hard to communicate that. Yeah, you could put all the marketing. Well, for a little while, they had a, it felt like they had a different like texture or something, and then it went. They it did. They, like don't don't get me wrong. We stumbled. There was a couple of things we had to correct, and we got back on course. But it did. It cost us some customers, and we I yeah. think we regained most of them. Back yeah, track, Daniel but. Arego, he uh, explained a little bit of that to me, and I, I thought that was uh, pretty admirable. You know, to put the company on hold because you found out that through a study uh, that the fiber source was registering a little differently. Right. Exactly. And Ron was like, no, this has to change. Yeah. And then we could have done nothing. And some companies still use that same fiber, cyber, fiber source. Yeah. And, right. But there were bars like uh, Detour bars. And I remember uh, because I used oh, to yeah. work for WWE at the time. Really? And I got Vince McMahon obsessed with uh, Detour, Detour bars. They were the hot ticket in the those day. Those were good. Yeah. And so they were had, like candy bars, though. He had they his really whole were. office was Detour bars. Really? And then, yeah. And then a report came out that Detour bars were bullshit. Right. And then I'm in the middle of that because he's like, oh, thanks a lot. You know, like, <laughs> he sabotaged my diet, you know, kind of thing. And it's like, I'm the one that made Vince fat, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> That's funny. But yeah, he found out afterwards. And then it was, I think he still kept eating them, though. I think he still likes them. We saturated their office with the cookies when, when they launched every. Well, now they, now WWE's all Quest. That's yeah. Yeah. It. You know, you we sent a bunch. Because the company's grown so much, so you guys must have been uh, under a microscope, right? With, with the, food labels with the claims and different things like oh, that right? always there's always yeah. someone going to scrutinize your labeling yeah, right um we've been pretty fortunate i mean we're pretty straightforward everything we do but right. yeah there's always someone going to look to try and right. challenge well it. from day one people were like there's no way that there's not for carbs sure. in this you yeah know, yeah like, oh, we got challenged a couple times and you got to just hit it head on and, and here's the facts and here's the right. science behind it i think the story is really cool and i i'm i'm uh you know gathering up more information from from uh some of the quest uh people oh you know as i continue to interview more of you guys you know had daniel rego on the show great guy yourself and uh we're gonna get to ron and then we're gonna have shannon on the show wow um uh, we decided to have shannon on the show separately so she doesn't 
uh, overrun uh, anything that Ron's about to about to say. They're both but, amazing people. Yeah, yeah. they're inc- incredible. And they have people. their own stories. Um, and I'm not sharing these stories because uh, you know I'm trying to pr- promote the product. I, I do like the product, so if people like it, then have at it. But uh, I just think the story is really interesting. I think it's great how you guys, uh, you met at a gym. You said that you just saw Shannon. You're like, hey, she's pretty cute. Yeah. You got on an extra piece of exercise equipment next yeah, to her. That's the truth. And uh, then you just started communicating with them and you realized they had a bar company and uh, it, things yeah, started it, slowly, slowly grow yeah, from there. It just became a, a really great fit. And I, I actually got tired of doing what I was doing. I was like, this is like a cool company. They're a great guy. And, but there was nothing attractive about the company. I want to reiterate, we were in the hood. We were in Compton <laughs> in just a shitty little warehouse. And when I went and visited, I was like, are they going to be in business next month? Yeah. <laughs> no. And, and so it was, it was just their, their energy, their vibe. They were so proud of the product they made. That's what made it exciting. How many people were working there at the time? Maybe 20 people. Yeah. It's, it was a small, right. we shared. As a matter of fact, it was almost uncomfortable because my company, I had an office with an outer office with an assistant and I came there and we shared little, these little Ikea desks. Mm-hmm. There was like eight of us in an office. Just all piled up all on top. All piled up, sitting, you know, around in a big circle. I was like, this is so awkward. This is almost uncomfortable. Yeah, like, to, see where even... it's, to see where it's grown from there yeah. is just insane. Oh, it's incredible. Now you walk in and it's got its own, like, production studio in there. And it's yeah. got, you know, it's just got everything. Yeah. It still doesn't have a corporate stuffy feel to it, though, right? I mean, it still seems, at least with your, your particular job... And even just uh, in seeing kind of Ron bounce around and stuff, I'm sure you guys have meetings and there's some serious things that go on, but it, it, it seems yeah, the, like, it seems like it still has its uh, original grassroots held intact. We try and, we try and maintain that. It's important to yeah. maintain the core values and the mission that you believe in. I mean, obviously we've evolved as a company, we have streamlined, we have a new CEO running the operation daily, but we try and we did something, we, t- we closed down half day and went bowling mm-hmm. after uh, we had a town hall meeting. So we, we always want to try and celebrate cool things right. and you have to. You, that's just where we started, you know, and yeah, you have to make it fun. Cause it's a, it's a long, it's a long journey. Yeah. Um, anyway, just in kind of concluding, uh, wrapping everything up here. Uh, yeah, I'm really excited to talk to the rest of the crew and, and, uh, learn more about the story. Um, before we, uh, before we close out, you know, where, where can people find you? Uh, I'm primarily on Instagram. So it's Bruce E. Cardenas. And you're going to see him with a new fitness chick every week or every day. Well, that's every day. A, that's the only people that are allowed to find him. So when we're saying who <laughs> yeah, can that's find you. Dude request. Where can but you know what's kind of cool? I, I, Corey Everson, who we all know six oh, times Olympic, Corey got Everson. to spend some time with her. What yeah. a gem. Like the I original. Corey Everson. Hey, send her over here. And she, uh, we're going to get her on the <laughs> has show. This, has this job caused some ruffles with any relationships <laughs> no, you've no, had? No. <laughs> And, uh, and uh, no, but she she's an original Quest uh, fan. She knows yeah. Shannon, and it was just cool ca- talking to six time Miss Olympia yeah, when we yeah. were younger. She was she, on. Every- what did we we saw a poster for her, and she, she has was on a poster for um, stopping pain with some some uh, electro yeah. oh at the Arnold right yeah yeah electro stem painkiller thing yeah she was doing a, a speech yeah she looked thing. amazing she still looks amazing I, yeah I didn't I didn't I didn't I haven't never I haven't seen her recently but. Yeah, but she was at the Hall of Fame thing that Dr. Bob Goldman puts on, and yeah, Franco Dr. was there, Goldman, and yeah. Bill uh, Grant. There was a lot of old-timers yeah. there. It was, it was cool. Really cool. Well, that's pretty much yeah. it. Multiply your hustle, multiply your muscle. May all your shits be tapered. I'm at Mark Smelly Bell on Instagram and Twitter. Catch you later. That's a wrap. Thank you. <laughs>